Well, I always loved science as a child, all the way through. I used to think, oh, maybe I'll be a doctor, and then I thought, no, I'll be a scientist. So, I, yeah, I went to school right on the green. Science, biology was my favourite subject, so I applied to do science in Trinity, natural sciences too. And I did that. After two years, you specialise in one of the biological kind of sciences. So I did biochemistry for two years. And after that, I thought, well, I'll stay in science. And uh, I was quite young leaving college. I was only 20. So I decided I'd go to Italy. I met a guy in a pub, actually. He was just a friend of mine from college. He told me, I'm going to Italy next week. I'm going to Perugia. I'm going to get a job teaching English. And I thought, well, I'll go with him. You know, it was 89. There wasn't a huge amount of jobs around in Ireland at the time. So off we set and we got on the plane to Milan, got off the plane, got on a train and we were so tired and hungry that we got off the train in Bologna and we thought, well, this is quite nice. So we started looking for jobs and he found a job about 50 kilometres away in Modena and I just stayed in Bologna and eventually got a job. But I also got a job in the university there in the pharmacology department doing research. So I did think, oh, I'm going to stay in research. While I was in Italy, I met huge numbers of really kind of interesting people and I made very good friends with somebody and we decided we'd set up an English language magazine together. That was a bit of a joke of a magazine, but you know, it gave you a taste for it. Then I went and lived in Spain for a year in Barcelona. That was great. Um, but then I came back to Bologna and the same friend and I set up a desktop publishing business. We did a few books for people and started writing a bit of freelance for papers and applying for stuff. But that was how I made the transition. So, it, you know, I never planned it. It was just through kind of having adventures in Italy. When I moved back from Italy, I got a job in a campus company in Trinity that was making educational videos. I mean, I was very, very junior in this video production company. I used to mostly buy the biscuits and make the coffee and run around for people. Keelan, are there any instances in work or at home when you actually get to use your scientific knowledge? It's funny you ask that because last night, my son, he's been asked to do a project on a scientist and I still know quite a few scientists. So I said, you've got to do one on Luke O'Neill. You know, he's a brilliant immunologist. So yeah, I was explaining all about, you know, immunology and how it works and how the immune system can misfire. So yes, I did. But the other thing I think about science as a training for journalism is in science, you know, you always have to have a source. You have to be able to say, like in anything you write, you like you go, the moon is round. OK, how do I know that? I need to find a source for that. And I found that was very good training for journalism. When I was working in documentaries, I used to always go backwards through my scripts. So you're not reading with the flow, you're going backwards. And every single fact you came to, you'd ask, yourself, how do I know that? What is the source? And even if it was like, Jim lives in this block of apartments, you know, am I sure about that? Did I see a letterbox? Did I see his address? So I, I think science is a good training for journalism. What job were you looking for in science in particular? I don't know that I had ever decided. Mm -hmm. I, I just kind of assumed I'd just keep going, going, going. And I decided some stage later on. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it was different in the 80s that, that people didn't have clear-cut career plans. It was like, I want to get to university. I'm going to study science. And I suppose I had the notion, well, if you study science, you're going to be a scientist in some way. But mm -hmm. I, I didn't really know where. I always wanted to travel, though. When did you get into a radio station or a TV station? What I did was I bought the RT guide actually and picked out all the names of the radio producers in it and I wrote to them all and you know I just said look I'm really keen on working here's a few ideas for you I'd listen to the programs put in a few ideas very few of them came back to me but it was just enough so you just I got my foot in the door but I think the very first thing I did actually was film reviews on 12 to 1. I heard they were looking for a film reviewer and I found out the name of the producer and I rang up and I said, will you give me a go? And so he auditioned me and I got the job. So that was one 10 minute slot a week. So you weren't going to live on that. But um, then I, I got into the radio around the same time and freelanced for years and then worked on loads of different TV shows and then got a job on primetime. I always wanted to live in Italy and France and I did. I uh, Later on after a few years in primetime I left primetime and went and worked in France in Paris for two years in CNN World Report and Radio France International. So that was a terrific adventure as well. How does presenting the news live compare to making documentaries? It's, it's actually very different. It really is very different. I mean, you're still doing basic journalism. You're still asking the questions. I suppose in many ways, uh, prime time and doing those documentaries, that was a 24-7 job. You were always working, and that was a brilliant job. When I was in my 20s, 30s, it was so exciting. And we went to Nigeria, we went to Romania, we went to America, you know. And, and really, you got to know things that you would never have found out otherwise. So I always thought that was a wonderful thing about journalism, was that you, you learned about things that you wouldn't normally get to see. But So that's making documentaries. It's all-consuming. 
presenting. It is quite different. You still get to ask people questions, but fewer people and fewer questions. I mean, it's more high profile, but you're still working with a big team of people and it's it's very exciting when a big news story is breaking. I'm very eager to find out what has been the highlight of your career so far? Gosh, that's an interesting question. Do you know, you probably have to say, I mean, obviously being asked at the 6-1 is a huge highlight, a huge highlight. Can you remember how you felt when you found out that you were going to be the new 6-1 news anchor? Oh, I was delighted. I mean, the boss just said, um, can I meet you? And he said, um, I was thinking of this. And I was like, great. You know, I was delighted. I was delighted. So, the, I mean, 6-1 is a big highlight. But there's been lots of other things that have been highlights for me as well. I loved working on the Sean O'Rourke show. I used to fill in for Sean. That was great. Two hours of live radio, you know, and you could end up going anywhere. Like... Could be anything. I really enjoyed that. And, you know, the documentaries for Primetime, there were some of them that you put your heart and soul into it and you, you worked so hard. You know, I was very proud of a lot of that work. So there's been a number of highlights. It's a great career, actually. To conclude then, you worked in science and you worked in the media. If you could take either, which would you go for? Have you got a desire to work in science Oh, still, no, or? I don't. I mean, I still, I like reading about science. I like talking to people about science. I like finding out about stuff. But no, I, I'm, I'm very happy in media. You know, as I say, there's not, obviously there are differences. You're not working in a laboratory. You're not dissecting rats or whatever. But, um... You know, you're finding stuff out. Science is all about finding stuff out. And journalism, to me, is all about finding stuff out as well. It's about asking questions. In science, you try and answer those questions yourself through research, through experimentation. I suppose in journalism, you ask people the questions. and So they're not, they're not a million miles away from each other, in my mind anyway. Keelan, it's been a real pleasure chatting to you today. Thank you so much for taking time out. You're so welcome, Dylan. It's been an absolute pleasure meeting you as well. Thank you.